too hot. Right, well, I've been struggling to find an engine. I've been looking everywhere on eBay, can't find anything. There are a few V8 engines about, but I don't know if the bell house is quite the same. And anyway, uh, I thought I'll never find an engine. So the first person I rang said, come down the yard, I've got one. A friend of mine. He didn't really want to sell it. Um, so I just took it anyway, the bowl, so he couldn't put up much of a fight. Um, but he's a clever chap, there's not much he doesn't know about cats, and it ain't quite the right engine. This is the same engine, but non-turbo, so I think the one over there that's in a million pieces that came out of the eagle with a turbo, I think that was about 115 horsepower, and apparently this was about 94, so it's not a, not a huge difference, but it's a bit of difference, but the thing is, it's actually got the same pack. It'll fit in the digger exactly the same. It's got the same pumps on and everything. So I haven't got to mess around really. I mean, these parts are knackered, but I've got better ones. Uh, so what I thought, he's never had it running. He brought it off a scrap yard that literally gassed it out of the machine and he's never had it running. It's just sat at his yard for years. So I've turned it over by hand. It does seem to turn over. So we're going to put some brand new batteries and I've sort of rigged it up. I haven't added any fuel yet, we're just going to see if it turns. I've got a CO2 extinguisher ready, just in case it does start and run away with itself. But um, yeah, I'm not really sure how you stop these. I think it stops on the throttle, so I think when you push it all the way back, that takes the rack off. So, I'm going to have a go. See if it'll crank over it. it. Might not even do anything yet. I've wired up a heat because obviously the original engine was direct injection, which means on a cold day you can just crank it and start straight up. This is indirect, so it will need heat to start. Um, so I've wired it to start. So that does just make a little spark. Don't know how long I should hold that on for. Probably ten seconds. Let's see what happens now. <laughs> that was a good start, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I don't think it can run for long because we've got no fuel, but... Sounding good. <laughs> Some water's coming out of that bell out here. There's a bit of oily, milky stuff here. Where? Oh, that's probably coming out of the pump, so I ain't going to worry oh, yeah. too much about that. As long as it's not coming out of the end, I'm going to give it a bit more heat. I wasn't expecting it to start, so this, this is a good start. Right, I'm going to give it a couple of seconds of heat. I'll give it some rest. For years, it's not even, I've not even put fuel in it, just literally connected back. Well, I don't think it's any oil. Push a little bit of oil out of there, look. But that's the oil pressure, so that goes to the gauge in the cab to tell you you've got oil pressure. So if it's weeping, someone's just rammed a bolt up it in Jubilee clicks it because they're absolute jippo. Um, I'm fucking well pleased with that. Should we start one more time and see if it starts? Yeah, go on. <laughs> I don't think we're doing a little bit of hydraulic oil in there. I'm heated on again. Actually, 
pissing fuel out the return. Fucking hell, well pleased with that. Well, <sighs> time to put it back in the digger. <laughs> We're going. Right, so we've done all the bits and pieces up on the engine, all the pipes, everything's connected. Well, most things connected. It is a little bit different, obviously, to the original engine, but it's more or less ready to start. Other than we haven't connected the fuel because the fuel tank's still full of shit, so we'll just run it off a funnel for now. But I took the track motors off to free it up so Thank I could you. move it, and that was a massive mistake because you have to now strip them to pieces, as Charlie's finding. To get the clutch packs back in. Have you put them in yet? Not no, yet. I'm just about to put the clutch so, so that was a bad idea. Like back in. What I think I probably should have done was take that bit off. But to the chap who designed this, if he's still alive, I don't like you. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna put the track motors on. Uh, I've then just gotta prime the oil pumps. It says you've got to prime them, so I'll put a load of oil down there and in that one, connect that up top it with oil or we'll start it up and I'm sure it will work perfectly fine. Oh. Right, right, I've made sure this is very, very nice and clean. Yeah. Right, so next piece, that's next. It needs to be spotless. Right, you bring it around then. It's actually quite a nice sun canopy this one. What have you done, Charlie? Very hot. So basically, we've talked. Like the big out of Jack's trousers when they cut them up. <sighs> you put that out first. So basically, we've just put the clutch assembly back together. Runs in this motor. And then here, there's like a sealed unit that works as a ram, pushes against the spring system that's there. We're not in a sterile workshop environment like you ideally would be putting this back together, but... This is the best workshop in a this. Yeah, listen to your language, I mean, come on. <laughs> Disgusting. Adam's had plenty of experience living things up. My house is normally small, isn't it? One motor back on. Now I've got to split the other one, put the clutch plates in that housing because you can't you can't get the teeth to line up because you've got two sets of teeth to line up for some stupid god knows what idiot thought of that but it's a terrible idea. Um, so I need to take that housing, part this pump and take the Break ram to pieces in the pump, then put the bolt that piece on, that trumpet housing, then slide the clutch plates or the brake packs in, then put the ram back together, then put the back of the pump on. Nice and easy. Oh. Oh. You got it? Click then. Huh? Did it click? No, it didn't work. Oh. So I'll put it on and I'll take it back off. It was. Uh, I came to look. I just came and no one were here. I thought, well, I just want to get this together because today's my only day of getting hydraulic pipes if I need any. Right, I need a 9 16 spanner socket to get that out. Right, 
that so drive pumps are back on everything's connected that we think we're going to top it up with hydraulic and then we're going to start it up and see what happens this could just be a giant waste of hydraulic oil <laughs> right what you need to do is shower Everyone. Get in your cab. Right, ready. Feel a rip. Tell me when you're ready, Joe. Oh, just messing myself in. Right, we've got the ignition. It's making noises. You want some heat? Give it some heat. Right, off the heat. though one leak to be fair. Coming Quite a short one as straight well. Straight back into here. Yeah we're gonna need to get some rag and stuff around this. Oh yes that's saving the environment. <laughs> Just let it leak. <laughs> um I don't know if I've got a spare one on pipe. How's your t-shirt? Yeah, yeah, like How <laughs> <laughs> did it pop it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're back. Tay has been off and got a new hydraulic pipe made in the only place that was open today. Charge an astronomical amount of money. Can you guess how much this one pipe costs to make? Literally costs more than we've paid for the digger. That's no exaggeration. Right, anyway, hopefully with this one it'll work so we put some butt plugs in here overnight just so it stops everything from leaking all over the place i've got hay fever which is good i'm gonna try and do this now oh oh we're already losing the oil look Ready? Yeah.
your tits is hydraulic <laughs> What's it that one? <laughs> I don't know how my eyes go. Right. So the expense. Okay, so the expense of 50, another 50 pounds on pies, which is ridiculous expensive. This was the corporate. That's the bottom union that comes out of the floor. It just corroded away. So, put another one on. Uh, I'm going to try it for another time to see if another part goes bang. If another part goes bang, I'm going to give up because it's just too expensive to not go to Corby Break and Hose, where I usually go to get parts made, rather than this other place. So, I'll put the tools away and we'll try it again. Just topping her up with diesel. This is the diesel we drained out of it. <laughs> nice and clean. High quality diesel.
Right, well, thank you all for watching. And uh, thanks for all the uh, birthday messages and all that. Um, I really appreciate that. And I suppose now I probably ought to get back to actually doing some tank stuff because you're all whinging about that. So I better, well, not whinging, but you keep on at me about it. Well, I was obviously uh, waiting. Jack's been had, had a operation, so he's had half his, his legs shaved. Joff's got some sort of problem with his legs, but anyway, um, bless him, he's a bit better. So hopefully he'll be back Monday, maybe. So we might start doing a few more bits, but I think it'll either be whatever he feels like. I don't want to push him too hard, so it might be something on the T34, or maybe the Stolly. But we'll have some more military vehicle content coming in soon. Obviously now I can use the cat as it is, so just need to power off the fuel tank out and put some, excuse me, some of the guards on. Um, and we've got another machine for the fleet of doing whatever the hell it is we do. See you later.